And I want to go over to this little soccer stadium and open up some sheets here. I want to talk about something that was added for update eight, the text favorite manager. So text favorite manager is, uh, let me zoom out. Actually, let me do this. Let's go back to here. So I just mentioned to you about having this local work set and then having a project wise property, uh, uh, project wise uh, project attached to this. So these two are kind of linked together. And part of my local work set, I have different properties that sit up there. One of them I defined was the postal code. Another one was the name, uh, the location street number. And then, you know, here's the location. So the number, you know, basically the address of that object. What I want to do is when I go into this, I want to place this. So I want to show you what a text favorite manager does for me. So text favorite manager isn't just for static tech. It's also designed to be used with fields. Everybody in here probably has used a field before. If you haven't, a field is placed into the text editor by right-clicking, going to insert field, and then going and selecting some property about an element, a file, and so on. The benefit of using a field is that it isn't just static text. Is that if the file name changes, if something changes about it, it will update. Commonly used for things like sheet name, uh, numbers, sheet names, uh, scale, uh, file name. Uh, all that kind of stuff. The area of a shape, that type of thing, are good examples of what we might use that for. Well, I have one called address. I select it. It fills it in. I can place it into my sheet. Now, while that's not real exciting, these things are incredibly easy to create. While that's easy, 223 Maryland Road, Singapore, and so on, it wouldn't be much to key that in, but I guarantee with the X amount of people that are on this call, There'll be somebody that types it in that types just a little bit differently, right? Uh, you might type it in perfect every time, but I guarantee if I type it, I have fat fingers, I'm going to make a mistake on it. That's where these things come in. Uh, they allow us to, you know, be able to, in the text editor, be able to define something like, in this case, I want to place something that shows uh, the file name or maybe the path to the file itself. So instead of me just using insert field to do it, I'm going to go to my text favorite manager and I'm going to show you a little bit about how it works real simply this is update eight you can create a new uh, text favorite if you want and I'll just call this path for example and in here I'm going to go ahead and I'm not even going to type anything in uh, I could um, but I'm just going to say file properties what do I want to get about it and by the way all of the properties um, about files and elements are all in here. So you literally could have kind of a living legend, if you will, in here that says, uh, this element is on this level, it's this size, it's this color, it's this style, it's this weight. Not that you would ever do that, but if the thing ever changed, guess what happens to your text? It updates. So a great little tool to be able to say, all right, let's pick something like the file name. And the file name itself, I want the path, but I really don't even want the extension to be shown nor do I want the file name itself. I don't need that. I just want the I want the extension. So our I only want the path. There we go. And you can see it in the preview. So this nice long path, that's what's going to get added to it. I'll accept that. And you'll see files.file name. If I save that, now anytime I want to place that, I go into my text editor. And there it is there. I can select it and let me zoom out because this is going to be kind of long. And let's just pop it into place right about there. So there it is. There's the, it, if I move that file, guess what happens to my path statement that's in here? It updates. All right. So these are incredibly easy to use. They can be text. They can be notes, all kinds of cool stuff. So for example, I want to label the first floor. So I'm going to say, all right, let's pop that right into place. Uh, there's my text for the first floor. I want to do this again, but I want the, I want the ground floor. But the difference is the ground floor is going to use a different text style. You'll notice that this masks the text out. This one up here, kind of tough to see, folks, sorry, does not. Okay. Did I have to change that? Did I have to make that change? No, just by using the text editor and 
text favorites, it takes care of it. It does way more than just plain text. So for example, let me zoom out. We're going to look at this elevator that's right here. I want to just label that as an elevator. So if I look at my annotate tools and I go to something like plain old place note, right? Regular place note, I'm going to say, all right, I want to label this as the elevator. Um, I want to start this at the terminator. And so I'm just going to pick where it is and just label. Real simple, you know, uh, leader line, terminator, and text. Good to go. Nothing is, is a field. Nothing is fancy about it. Just done. But then I realized, well, I also want to label the glass that's being used in there. So the key word here is label. So I'm going to use a label tool. Uh, or excuse me, I'll use uh, place note. I picked the wrong one. There we go. And this time I'm going to set this at Terminator. But my, um, my, no, I did pick the right one. Self confused here. There we go. And for my cell name, I'm going to pick Elevator Glass. You'll also notice a long list that's in here. There is a new option, a new new uh, tool that was added to this, and that happens to be uh, this one right here, which is this icon, which is it lets me filter the cell name, so only the ones that would apply to that particular element. Here, I don't have a real long list, so I'll just pick Elevator Glass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this at not the Terminator this time. How about I'm going to place this at the cell? So hanging on, I'm going to place this out here. You'll see it starts to place this formatted piece of text. But now I'm going to come in and I'm going to pick the actual element. And hopefully I'll, I'll pick zoom in on it so I can actually pick it. I think I selected it that time. Yeah, there we go. Now what's it doing? How's it filling that in? It's doing that from an item type that was attached to that element itself. My right mouse button doesn't seem to want to cooperate today. That's what seems to be going on. And that's it right there. That's the element itself that is considered glass that it's pulling that information from. So these can be real simple. They can be a little more complex. They can be incredibly complex and label all kinds of different things like you might see here with uh, this one that is uh, column details, for example. Um, this will pick, uh, say, one of these columns as an example. I can never zoom out to pick it. I'll just do this one here. And you can see it reads that same set of information, but in this case, this is for the glass itself. This is for the pier, or excuse me, the, the foundation. So these can be simple. They can be pretty complex. It's really up to you you know, how they're, how they're put together. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.